good day not sure if you can see but there's a little froggy there thinks it's well hidden I'm sure it was actually on the tiles it was just here when I came in and uh, I saw it I went to get my camera out and it got camera shy and yeah decided to uh, pop itself there Oh, very sweet, very sweet, and hopefully also eating slugs, fingers crossed. Weeding has been my main thing under the tomatoes and and the squash and also the larger weeds underneath the courgettes and the cucumbers but I've noticed that we've got a blight alert for Sunday is mainly for potato growers but as tomatoes are the same family as potatoes they uh, can get blight as well so I'm going to be doing some pruning of leaves lower leaves on these even though they're not particularly tall mainly to improve airflow because the better airflow that you have between your tomatoes which is one reason for not planting them too close uh, the better airflow there is, the less the propensity for the spools to fall on leaves and the ground and bring about blight in your tomatoes. We had, when we did tomatoes, was it two years ago, they were completely wiped out by blight. I think um, by this time they had been wiped out by blight and pulled out. But yeah, there's quite a few lower leaves like over here. So I'll leave the fruit on this plant, but take off those three, maybe four lower leaves just to improve airflow through the tomato bed. And I'll also cut back some of those courgette leaves, which are crossing over the path towards the tomatoes. Yeah. These are now well thinned out and pruned. A bit more weeding to do, but this has really improved the airflow through this tomato bed and cutting back 
those courgette leaves will have helped with that as well because the courgette leaves will just sort of on the tomato bed or over the tomato bed will act as a windbreak so um yeah i've harvested two courgettes two large courgettes larger than i would normally do they'll go into soup might go into a stew i did a really nice um courgette oh sorry courgette chickpea and potato stew the other day which was lovely um as you can see a bit more weeding to do there but the courgettes are really really producing as are the cucumbers which is great right i'm going to leave it there for today it's clouded over a bit but certainly the sun is going to be out again later i'm sure i'll be back later to do a bit more weeding and most probably some watering too but i will see you for sure another day bye good day i just got to the plot and i'm delighted to see that the golden gate are really beginning to form beans look in there that's great i think beans are forming on all now but oh yeah look at the back here look have we got any on the madeira maroon yet yeah they're beginning to look in there oh look Mr. Snail. Yeah. He's okay there. I don't mind him there. Yeah, the Madeira Maroon are beginning to... But I think I'll be doing our first harvest of the year. I saw this one yesterday. And I think that's right... Just the right size for Richard to say, yes, pick it nice and young. So I think I'll be harvesting that and we'll be sharing that this evening. Oh, look, the sun's coming out. And it's really been a, a mixture of sun and grey skies today. But yesterday we had so much rain, um, really did. And I did weed this bed the other day or earlier in the week. And look, the, the weeds are just absolutely coming for it again. But that's okay, that's okay. What I haven't um, done yet, and I'm going to do now, is I'm slightly anxious. With all the rain we had, I'm slightly anxious about the seedlings in the poly. So, with you know, I just, oh, a bit trepidatious haven't been in here yet I just grabbed the camera from the shed oh oh fantastic I sort of had imagined that there would be lots of snails overnight even on the bench and that these would have been eaten but actually the lettuce are, are doing fine these are the Portuguese cabbage stroke Nero di Toscana cross that we sowed and we have 100 there's germination there germination there so 100 percent germination in our own saved seed so over here let me just bend down i have the seeds that i sowed so i'm going to put those into my back pocket now and take those home and put them back in the fridge and i think we're going to be pricking out those next week but these you can see they're bending towards the front of the poly so i'm going to turn those around yeah you can see they're bending away from the front of the poly now and by this afternoon they'll be well to wending their way back but yeah, that'll help them grow and strengthen too. I'm really pleased that they haven't been munched. I might use some of our organic slug pellets um, sparingly across the top there just to, to double check. Because I don't really want to lose any of those. 
But the job that I'm going to get on with now is tying up this uh, gherkin and the, the melon and things over there. And I'm just going to put a, a string. You can see here where I tied string in the past. So I'm going to tie a string there and then bring it across and then tie it there. And um, yeah, then I'm going to string these up and then that will leave the ground free. And then I'll see whether there's any room to, to put anything else there. I'm also thinking we were given a whole load of coriander seeds the other day. So I think I'm going to take this out, cut it back certainly but maybe take it out but i'll leave this one in because it's going to flower and it's going to be lovely Well, that looks quite a bit better now. The, um, well, as you saw, the twine is up along there. The gherkins, there's two have been strung up. The melon has been strung up. I've just noticed there's another shoot there. So I'm going to string that one up that way to sort of fan out the melon. Whether it will come to anything, who knows. The coriander that I was leaving going to seed has gone. I've cut it right back. And hopefully it will re-sprout from the base. We will see. Um, and I've left these coriander in. That one's going to seed. I'm just going to stake it up a little bit. So it's vertical. These coriander... I've just cut back any leaves that had gone over and we'll continue to harvest from those. As you know, we're saving seeds from here and we're saving seeds from this lettuce as well, which is a oak leaf variety. Um, hopefully you can see that it's uh, the leaves are sort of oak leaf shaped. Anyway, more tidying to do this side and at the back and I think I'm going to get on and do that and I think what I also need to do if you can see here that's the buddleia I need to get in there and cut the buddleia back gosh why haven't I thought of doing that already anyway yeah it's going to be done with this wind I don't want to um have anything going against the poly which will puncture it so yeah i'm going to get on and do that yeah happy with that job done today and now i'm going to do a little bit more harvesting
This is our early potato bed. This butterfly here was just on my knee here a moment ago. I don't think you can see it very well, but it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. But yeah, uh, this is our early potato bed. I've harvested up to here, up to the butterfly. And I haven't weeded this area for about three weeks and you can see that I haven't. I've decided that with the housing market being as it is at the moment, which is pretty static, it's most probably sensible to harvest all the potatoes in this bed and get some Autumn King carrots in. Even though we have every hope of moving in the coming months, the market might not allow us to do that. And it will be sensible, therefore, to have Autumn King carrots sown here so that we have crops of carrots, just like I've harvested through, um, through the winter. So that's exactly what I'm going to get on and do. Whether that butterfly will remain with us, I'm not sure. But what a happy sight. There are so, so many butterflies around at the moment on our our plot and on the um, on the allotment as a whole but particularly on these top plots whatever we're doing we're doing it right for butterflies that's for sure anyway harvesting That's this bed now sorted and almost ready for sowing carrots. I've harvested quite a few potatoes from that other half, which is really great. And there are a couple down here, which I'd missed as well. So that's super. And I'm just going to have a look around the plot because I'm sure I've got some pots that I've got spent compost in and uh, as long as nothing's growing in them, I will be putting that spent compost on top here because that will be good. The thing with um, carrots is that and parsnips that, is that you don't want the soil or compost to be too nutritious. So the fact that this has had potatoes which have used up a huge amount of nutrients over their growing season whilst in the ground is good because this means that this compost here is low nutrient compost low nutrient soil which is grand i'm just going to leave it for a couple of days we're due more rain so that will um you know obviously come on this bed and soak in the soil itself though is pretty pretty good there were some patches that were absolutely bone dry but I've broken those up and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And of course, what will happen is with any further rain that we do get, it will uh, invigorate any weeds that are still remaining in here and I can pull them out as and when. Yeah, oh, I can see a centipede. Oh, happy centipede. I'm glad to have got that bed sorted. I know I often say I'm glad to have done X, I'm glad to have done Y, but you know, it's true. It's, it just feels like one is moving forward. It feels like an achievement, <laughs> you know, that's really good. And as I say, you know, we don't know what the situation is going to be with our house sale, you know, fingers crossed the next person that comes may make an offer or we may get an offer from the 24 people who have been already. Um, we may get that this week you know we may not get it at all so who knows so best to get those carrots sown in that bed and I think I'm going to be harvesting more of the carrots here in the coming days there aren't many of them they germinated quite well and then brush our resident fox that we haven't seen for a while decided that raised bed was actually literal 
so decided to you know go to sleep on top of them so he did quite a, a few of the carrot seedlings in but you know what very happy with those and no um no sign of carrot root fly whatsoever so yeah very very happy with those and also i've got this bucket which is sort of full up to about here with potatoes bit of a wobbly one there a knobbly one uh, a few smaller ones as well so yeah overall i reckon there's about i don't know five kilos in there maybe and yeah those carrots those five carrots which are lovely lovely so yeah i think what i'm going to be doing is harvesting the rest of the carrots over the coming days um i know the lettuce is going to stay in because we're going to be harvesting seeds from the lettuce but i'll review that bed because i'm wondering whether i sow more autumn king carrot in that bed as well we will see how we do anyway i'm going to stop waffling if you've got any comments please leave them down below any questions please do the same and if you're on planet vegetaria i'll see you through next week with more segments of a week at the plot and if you watch on youtube i will see you in five days time for part one of what i will be doing at the plot next week and of course there'll be a part two as well which is which this is the end of for this week right i'm going that sun is pretty bright and i'm going to have a cup of tea i brought my flask down i'm going to have a cup of tea and just do a bit of pottering see you very soon and happy growing bye